Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Hugh Freeze, the Auburn Tigers continue the momentum coming out of the transfer portal, going over and grabbing former Alabama cornerback Antonio Kite. And this is a, a kid that, I mean, there's a lot of reason to be excited about Antonio Kite. And it's not necessarily what he's done his first two years at Alabama. More importantly, what he can be for the Auburn Tigers, a guy that didn't play much his first two years. When you look at that Alabama roster, that depth chart, two NFL caliber boundary cornerbacks, there really wasn't that much opportunity for a guy like Antonio Kitan to kind of further that conversation. This was a kid that I mean had oh, was a was a phenomenal basketball player coming out of high school, but played both ways on the football field. And even coming into Alabama in that 2022 class, he wasn't necessarily sure what position he was going to play, right? Whether he's going to play wide receiver or slot in at that defensive back room. So I think there were a lot of growing pains in development that Antonio Kite had to go through the first two years. But going into year three, like that's probably where you're expecting him to settle in in that defensive back room. And a guy that has a very, very high upside, right? A top 150 national prospect for a reason. I think a lot of Auburn fans can be excited about Antonio Kite. We want to talk about a few different things. One, Antonio Kite, what he brings to this Auburn roster, but more importantly, the trend that we talked about earlier today with Hugh Freeze on the recruiting trail going up against Kalen DeBoer. Before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys and a shout out to the Auburn Tiger fans. This has been a program we talked about earlier this morning with the OC hire. We've been consistently updating the commitments in the transfer portal. You guys continue to show a ton of support. Cannot thank you guys enough. All the War Eagles in the comment section. Appreciate you guys. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into, into Antonio Kite. And uh, again, I think what excites you the most is him settling in as a cornerback at the college football level, right? Goes to Alabama, not necessarily what position or what position or what, uh, what he's going to do at Alabama. And I think you saw some of those growing pains, not having a ton of familiarity on the defensive side of the football. He gets developed two years at Alabama, comes to Auburn as a guy that now has two years of experience at that cornerback position under his belt. And this is probably the year that you expect him to potentially make that jump. And what I think excites you more is what Auburn's doing in the portal in the sense of really looking at this roster and, and asking the question, where do we need to improve heading into 2024? And I think that defensive back room with just the, the sheer amount of guys that were going to the NFL, Hugh Freeze looked at that room and said, we need to address it. Charles Kelly doing a phenomenal job in a short time with Auburn in the transfer portal. That's really, in my mind, how the transfer portal should be used, right? Hugh Freeze 12 months ago took over this program. It was in a bad spot from a roster standpoint. Brian Harson left this team with just not a lot of talent. So I think Hugh Freeze just goes out and tries to grab as much talent as he can and bring it to Auburn. This transfer portal cycle to me is a lot more of a calculated approach. One, Hugh Freeze, I think, put a lot of effort in building that 2024 class as opposed to working the portal, which I think in terms of the long-term success of this Auburn program is much more important. But secondly, I don't think Hugh Freeze wanted to go out and completely overturn this roster. He didn't need to as much. I think he took a evaluation of what Auburn had coming back in 2024 and said, all right, we need to establish or we need to get some depth at certain positions. I think the defensive back room was certainly one. That defensive line was certainly another. And they're starting to kind of check those boxes with some guys like Jaron Thompson, who's played a ton. And then a guy like Antonio Kite, who not necessarily has played a ton at the college football level, but has a very high upside. And that kind of blend of inexperience and upside and then experience and high floor is a nice kind of model for the Auburn Tigers in the portal. And I want to get to, in my mind, what's more exciting for the Auburn Tiger fans. And that is the trend on the recruiting trail. And I get this was a transfer portal get from Alabama, but I do think it sheds some light on the conversation that we had earlier today. And that is you look at the SEC and the power vacuum on the recruiting trail. I mean, Alabama was a dominant recruiting powerhouse in the SEC. And I think largely because of Nick Saban, I'm very interested to see if Alabama can maintain the level of recruiting. Now that Kalen DeBoer is in charge at Alabama, right? A lot of, a lot of players were going to Alabama. Some reportedly taking significantly, less NIL money 
to go get coached by Nick Saban because of the proven track record of the development and putting guys into the NFL. I wonder if that is going to continue with Kalen DeBoer at Alabama. And quite frankly, I just don't think it will. I mean, you look at Kalen DeBoer and his recruiting chops. We talked about it this morning. And he had two of the best seasons for the Washington Huskies in program history and still couldn't crack the top 30 in recruiting. And so now he comes to Alabama in the SEC, having very little to no experience recruiting this area of the country. And I think Kirby Smart and Hugh Freeze are looking at this Alabama program and quite frankly, looking their chops and saying, hey, we compete for pretty much every top kid in this area of the country. It very much comes down to Alabama, Auburn, and Georgia. And I think with Nick Saban out of the picture, I think I think Hugh Freeze and Kirby Smart, two elite, elite level recruiters, are looking at that Alabama program and say that that is easy pickings, not only grabbing some of their guys out of the transfer portal, but winning out on the recruiting trail as well. You take a look at a guy like Ryan Williams, for example, right? Coming down to Alabama, Auburn, I know Texas a and making a run as well. Auburn's probably feeling pretty good about where they sit with Ryan Williams as Nick Saban leaves the program. And I think that's just one of those examples of if you're Auburn, you're looking at what recruiting looks like in, in the next couple of years. I think you have to be really excited about Kalen DeBoer taking that job at Alabama. Now, again, I, I said it earlier and I'll say it again. This is not me knocking Kalen DeBoer as a schematics coach. He is one of the best offensive minds in college football. There's really no doubt about it. But at the end of the day, we know what it takes to win in the SEC. And that is recruiting talent, right? Talent acquisition, having just better players than the players lining up across from you. And you look at Auburn and where they want to sit in the SEC and recruiting rankings. They want to be up there with the Georgia Bulldogs. And over the next couple of years, as Alabama might take a dip in recruiting, that's not only going to hurt Alabama, I think it's going to help Auburn because some of those kids that were going to go to Alabama are probably going to be coming to Auburn. So Hugh Freeze, one, an elite recruiter, I think is smelling blood in the water. I think he's not only going to take some guys from Alabama's roster, but also start beating out Kalen DeBoer in Alabama on the recruiting trails. Well, and that's probably what excites me the most. Antonio Kite, again, a guy that basketball background, he's got really good ball skills, has familiarity as a wide receiver. So you talk about ball skills. You talk about the physical checklist, and this is kind of what we talk about a lot with cornerbacks, right? Length, size, speed, and then ball skills. Antonio Kite has all that, 6'1", 180 plus pounds former basketball player and wide receiver, so you feel comfortable about Antonio Kite making plays with the football in the air, and he's a phenomenal athlete. There was a reason he was a four-star coming out of high school. Nice get with Antonio Kite, but more importantly, a little bit of a representation of maybe what's to come for Auburn on the recruiting trail. Appreciate you guys rocking with the boys again. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel, and we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.